This movie is for learning target five, isosceles and equilateral triangles for geometry. Isosceles triangles are where you have two sides that are congruent. So you may be used to two triangle or one triangle where you get two sides congruent. We call those two sides legs. We call the angle that's in between the two congruent legs the vertex angle. And these we call the base angles that are down below. Now keep in mind that the isosceles triangle could also be on its side. It doesn't mean that the base angles are on the bottom. It just means that the base angles are the ones across from the congruent legs. So these are some terms that you'll need to know for isosceles. Vertex angle, legs, base angles, and you can see the equilateral triangles. Those are when you have all three sides congruent. And if it's equilateral, then it's also equal angular. And those are a very specific kind of triangle. In your handbook, I would like you to add the isosceles triangle theorem. This says when you have two congruent sides of a triangle, then you know that this, the angles opposite those two sides will be congruent. So if I had an isosceles triangle that looked like this, where these two sides were congruent, then the, so the angles opposite will be congruent. That is the isosceles triangle theorem. Add that to your handbook. Also put a little star, because that's one that sort of pops its head into future units, sort of like our congruent supplements theorem. It's not that we hit it every day to be very familiar with it. However, it does creep in every now and again. So this one is just as important as that. Pause the movie to add that and then press play when you're finished. Let's do a proof for the isosceles triangle theorem. Here we'll begin with an isosceles triangle, x, y, z. We're going to be given that x, y is congruent to x, z. And we're going to draw x, b, which is going to be the bisector of the vertex angle, angle y, x, z. So the second thing is that XB bisects angle YXZ. Okay, pause the movie, put your reasoning for each of these, and press play when you are finished. All right, number one is given. Two, we have that these two angles, YXB, is congruent to ZXB by definition of bisects. Because that's what we have listed in our given. And because of that definition, I can say those two angles are congruent. What allows me to say XB congruent to XB? Reflexive. We can see by how I marked those two triangles that they are both congruent by side angle side. And then angle Y is congruent to angle Z by C, P, C, T, C. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Let's add the converse to the isosceles triangle theorem to your handbook. And the converse says that if you have two congruent angles in a triangle, then the sides opposite will be congruent. So here I have A and B are both congruent to each other. Therefore, we get the sides opposite congruent, giving us an isosceles triangle. So pause the movie, add this to your handbook. I would star this one as well because it pops in and out of our units, future units. And then press play when you are finished adding, the, adding this to your handbook. Okay, let's go to this slide. I want you to pause the movie, try A and B on your own, and then press play when you are finished. All right, now that you've finished A and B, it says here AB congruent to CB. Let's look. AB is here, CB is here. We have that yes, those will be congruent. The reasoning is because I have the two base angles congruent, 
the two opposite sides will be congruent. So this is by the converse of isosceles triangle theorem. That's going to make these two congruent. Let's see the next one. Is A congruent to DEA? This angle. Well, because I have the two sides congruent, these are going to be congruent. So this is yes by the isosceles triangle theorem. Pause the movie, try this one on your own, and then press play when you are finished. It says, is angle WVS congruent to angle S? The answer here is yes, and that is by the isosceles triangle theorem, since the two sides are congruent. This one says, is TR congruent to TS? And this one would be yes by the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. I've established that angle R and angle S are congruent, so therefore the sides opposite will be congruent. Can you conclude that RUV, let's erase some of these, RUV is this triangle here, is isosceles. Please explain. Well, in looking at this, I have this angle congruent to this one. But that doesn't mean that this angle is congruent. In fact, if I take this little section here, and I look at how this is hitting, and I highlight it over here. Oops. The most common mistake is that people think that these two angles are vertical angles. They are not vertical angles. Vertical angles are these two angles when you have two lines intersecting each other. Now, I will say properties in science like light rays or a ball bouncing, when it hits something, it will reflect, causing these to be congruent angles. So in science, that happens a lot. But mathematically, there is no proof that these two angles would be congruent. So we can't prove these two angles congruent. The answer to this is no. You cannot prove those congruent. Let's go to the next slide. This one has us taking the isosceles triangle and we're bisecting the vertex angle so if I took an isosceles triangle and I bisected the vertex angle up here and these two angles would be congruent let's do that again these two angles congruent when that happens now, we started with an isosceles, so it's fine to label that like that. We could prove that these two triangles are congruent by side angle side because I have reflexive. So by side angle side, the two triangles are congruent. Then I have these two angles are congruent. And these two angles in here are going to be 90. The reason why those will be 90 is because they are both congruent and supplementary. So when you have two angles that are both congruent and supplementary, they can only be 90 degree angles. So this one is saying that, oh, and also these two line segments will be congruent. They are CPCTC. This theorem is shortcutting that, saying when you bisect the vertex angle, you create a perpendicular bisector to the base side. So anytime you bisect the vertex angle. Let's look at that. That was a bad triangle. Let's try that again. If this is an isosceles triangle and I bisect the vertex angle, the vertex angle being the angle between the two congruent sides, then I'm creating a right angle here because it's perpendicular and it's bisecting this side. So it becomes a perpendicular bisector. That's what this theorem is saying. Add that to your handbook. So pause that, add that to your handbook, and then press play when you are finished. Okay, pause the movie, try this one on your own, press play when you are finished.
Now 54 is up there and X is up here. Let's see how we fill that in. So we here we start with an isosceles triangle. We bisected the vertex angle, so I know this is perpendicular and I know these two will be congruent. So if I'm looking at this triangle, I've got an X angle up here. So I know that 54 plus X plus 90 equals 180. So in solving that, we get X is 36. So I know X has to be 36 degrees. We have two corollaries. Now a corollary is a theorem that can be proved easily using the theorem. So you'll see in your handbook that we have these two corollaries, one to theorem 4, 3, the other one to 4, 4. And this corollary is relating the same idea that we had with isosceles to an equilateral. It says if a triangle is equilateral, then the triangle's equal angular. So if I have all three sides congruent, then I have all three angles congruent. And this one is if a triangle is equal angular, then it's equilateral. This one says if I have all angles congruent, then I have all sides congruent. Pause the movie, add those to your handbook, press play when you are finished. Is GK congruent to HK? So we're trying to see if these would be congruent. And is HL congruent to J KJ? Pause the movie, try that on your own, press play when you are finished. This one is yes, and the reasoning is by the converse of isosceles triangle theorem. This one, HL and KJ, are not parts of triangles. They're not sides, so we can't prove them to be congruent. So this one is no. Here we've embedded algebra with this lesson, so pause the movie, try this on your own. Press play when you are finished. Here we can see that the two base angles are congruent. So by the converse of the corresponding, sorry, converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, I know that 7x minus 10 must be equal to 3x plus 6. And so in solving this, we subtract 3, and we add 10, so we get that x is 4. And when x is 4, I get an isosceles triangle. It says in the diagram that triangle PLN is congruent to LNS. So we already know that these two triangles are congruent. What is the measure of angle S in the figure? So go ahead and pause the movie, try this on your own, press play when you are finished. Because the two triangles are congruent, I know these vertex angles are congruent, so I'm going to label that. And I know that these base angles will be congruent. So because of that, I've got that this is 50 degrees right here. And because that's 50, I know that the three angles, I don't know what these two are, but all three of these together give me 180. So if I set my equation 50 plus x plus x equals 180, I can solve this equation. I get 50 plus 2x equals 180 minus 50 and divide by 2. I get that x is 65 degrees. And that's all because these two triangles started to be congruent and I could put the, re the corresponding parts together. We're going to stop the movie there. That's it for this lesson on isosceles.